from previous owners never servicing the auto transmission fluid because of the lifetime sticker threat or not knowing, at 227,000 miles, the reverse gear stops working and current EGS second gear clutch fault present. For what it is, buying a new or rebuilding the auto transmission are very expensive choices. So took a chance at gambling money on eBay for a used low mile auto trans. I've got a really good feeling about this auto trans, so I've decided to degrease the auto transmission and prep it for paint. Also, before rinsing the transmission, use masking tape and paper towels to cover both the breather tube and the transmission cooler ports so water does not enter inside the transmission. Using heavy duty gunk engine degreaser, spraying all areas of the transmission and then letting the degreaser sit for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes, he scrubbed all areas of the transmission with a wheel brush and reapplied more gunk degreaser to the transmission. Flip it over the transmission to clean and scrub the bottom of the trans pan. While some residual fluid came out of the vent tube, it was a good sign to see that the transmission fluid was still a dark gold color, meaning the transmission wasn't abused and must have had longer drive trips before the car got totaled. After cleaning and letting the transmission dry up for 3 hours, it was time to paint. So start off painting with VHT engine primer. After the primer coat dried up, started painting the transmission with VHT engine paint, burnt copper metallic. After letting the engine paint dry up after two hours, the primer absorbed a lot of the paint that was put on before, and now it needs an additional coat of paint. After its third coat of paint, its true color is finally stained. And the same process goes for painting the torque converter and the bottom of the transmission. After a couple of days due to cold temperatures, the engine paint's officially dry and it's now ready for its final coat of engine clear coat. About three coats of engine clear coat was applied to the transmission within 10 minute drying period segments. After the engine clear coats dried up, the effort finally shows off its copper metallic in the sun on this BMW GM transmission and is now ready to be installed on the E46. Before removing parts off the car, I decided to drain the old worn transmission fluid out. Next, we remove the four rusted exhaust nuts that have been on there forever. 
To make this task easier, I use the Brenzomatic Map Gas hand torch till the rusted nut is glowing bright red. Next I remove the remaining exhaust system nuts and the holder mounts. After using a second hand to remove the entire stock stainless steel exhaust, I remove the heat shields underneath the drive shaft. Next I remove the front stiffening plate frame. Next I remove the rear drive shaft bolts. Then the drive shaft itself. Then, with the Mighty Vac Fluid Evacuator Special Tool, I use the new transmission fluid and pump it into the old transmission to circulate and have cleaner fluid inside the transmission cooler and the trans lines. Then we run through the transmission gears and circulate the fluid. Mm -hmm. This is so when the trans cooler and trans lines attach to the other transmission I'm putting in, I'm not pumping in old 220k black fluid into it. So now I support the transmission using a pole jack and remove the transmission cross member frame. Next I remove the gear shifter cable and lever. Then remove the transmission cross member. Next I remove the trans cooler lines off the transmission. Cut my magnetic the uh, train bolt from Bulvarian Auto Spark. It's always good to have the plug any additional wear stuff inside the transmission. I'm going to pop the uh, transmission cooler lines right now. I'm going to pull air into the cooler lines again, kind of residual out of those lines as much as possible. Next, I'm setting up a transmission jack which uses compressed air which will be making the job easier for a one person deal. Next, I secure the transmission onto the jack using a nylon belt. Next, 
Next, we remove all the transmission bell housing bolts and the bolts from the engine starter, which at some angles, it's still a pain. Next, remove all torque converter bolts off the engine flex plate. Also, we clean and wire brush the face of the bell housing for any residual paint that has dripped on during the painting process. At the moment, checking to make sure every bolt hole of the bell housing is not clogged up with engine paint, so it will prevent unwanted stress later on when bolting the transmission onto the engine block. Next, applying grease inside the bolt holes of the bell housing. Next, applying grease on the dowel pin. <clears throat> Next, cleaning the transmission cooler line ports for any debris and residual paint. Next, removing and transferring parts off the old transmission onto our low mile transmission.
Next we saw on transbound from our low mile trans and the rubber is still normal. Next, secure the low mile transmission onto the jack using the nylon belt. Next, greasing the flex plate hole where the torque converter is going to line up. Next, the transmission is raised and made jack alignment adjustments so the torque converter and bell housing meshes with the engine block. Once the transmission was aligned, installed all bolts to the bell housing and torqued down two bolts so the trans jack can be moved out of the way. Next, torque down all the bell housing bolts. Then installed and torqued down all flex plate bolts. Next, installing a shift linkage cable to the shifter lever. Now torquing down the shift linkage holder bracket to the transmission.
after installing two new O-rings to the trans cooler lines, installed and bolted down the trans cooler lines to the transmission. Next using the pull jack, I raise the transmission with the cross member attached to the hose aligned, installed and torqued down cross member bolts. Next, install and torque down the drive shaft to the transmission. Next, remove the drain bolt and inject the trans fluid so some fluid drains out of the trans pan, making sure the bottom of the pan is free of contamination. Now topping off transmission fluid into the trans with Casherol Transmax high mileage formula till it starts pouring out of the fill hole. Let go of the brake. Go in neutral. Go in D. Swipe to manual. Go one, two, three, two, one. They go back to neutral. Go to reverse. Do the same thing like three times. Alright, is the engine temp almost in the middle? Was it like to the third? Should be good. Alright, put it in um park. Park. After that, the fill bolt is removed again and injected with more trans fluid until it starts pouring out of the fill hole again. After the second run of swiping through the gears and the engine cooling temp is almost at operating temperature, inject the fluid once again into the fill hole until fluid comes out. This will be the final top off. Finally, torque 
down the fill bolt. Going deep. Give it a little gas, see if when it goes to the second and the third gear and then let go. Feels like it stayed in gear. If you want to, if you want to manual shift it, yeah. Start from one, go to two. Give it a little gas. Two. resolving issues with the shift linkage. Shields and exhaust is installed back on and then out for the test drive, which the transmission is very healthy and can't even feel the transmission shifting through the gears, which I call super efficient. If you watch this video to the very end, which is now, you can see from the original live footage the time has been chopped and edited from six hours to about an hour eliminating lots of dead time and adding GoPro camera footage into it from what was captured on iPhone 8. Although the views and comments are lost from deleting the live video, one comment I feel I can give a better visual to that person's answer to the gear symbol on the dash, the result was that the gear selector lever hardware was damaged, causing the shift linkage to have play and confusing the EGS module about gear position it was in. So instead of chasing the switch part in the transmission, which I believe is the neutral safety switch and not the cause of the problem, I've replaced the shift linkage hardware with new parts and that EGS switch fault did not return to this day. Hope you enjoyed the shorter edited version of this video. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next episode.